Hey, biology students, I wanted to take um, one more short video uh, to explain the difference between passive and active transport, which we kind of did already. Um, so I talked a lot about passive transport, like that diffusion. Remember that I dropped some food coloring in water and we watched that diffusion process. And I talked about osmosis and how water moved through the cell membrane. I posted a couple of other videos on that. The, la the only thing we haven't talked about, and please, I know this looks like a lot of words, but <laughs> this is really, I think this is really the only slide um, that we need to go through and then some picture slides that I want to show you. I want you to be ready um, for a lab on Wednesday when you come back. So remember we said passive transport, like a passive person is someone who's just pretty chill and doesn't get excited about things doesn't use up a lot of energy, where someone who's active uses a lot of energy, um, maybe is pretty excitable and those kinds of qualities. So when we talk about movement through a cell membrane, active transport is by definition, this is, this is a movement through the cell membrane that actually does require the use of energy. And when we talk about energy in, at the cellular level, we are talking about the use of that ATP. Remember where we said the ATP is made? Hopefully you remember from talking about the cell organelles. One of them makes energy for the cell. Um, I'm not gonna say it, hopefully you know it. Um, so active transport uses some ATP to move molecules across that cell membrane, oftentimes against the concentration gradient, not always, but oftentimes. So remember nature likes to go Oh, if, you know, if, if I have food coloring in water, the food coloring is in one collective glob in the beginning, but it diffuses through the water until it's evenly distributed. Um, that's moving with the concentration gradient. It's going from an area where it's very concentrated to areas where there's not as much food coloring, or we say it's less concentrated because nature doesn't like that concentration gradient. Well, think of if we actually wanted to take our little beaker of water with food coloring in and somehow get the food coloring out of there, it would require some work. That would not be an easy task to do. That would probably require some energy use. So that also is true with those processes in the cell. So um, there's a, there are several mechanisms that are considered active transport. One of them is the sodium potassium pump. So you might recognize if you're an athlete that sodium and potassium are electrolytes in the body and they're very important at the cellular level. And your cells work really hard and actually expend some energy making sure that you have the proper sodium um, ion balance and the proper potassium ion balance. And there's a carrier protein that, that makes this sodium potassium pump that moves those through the membrane. Um, some, not necessarily in, from an area where they're more concentrated to less concentrated, it might be in the opposite direction. So they have to be in balance and that's really important. So if you get really low, like if you're an athlete and you get really dehydrated, when you sweat, it's not just water that you lose. You've probably noticed that your sweat tastes a little salty and that's because of the sodium ions that are, and you also lose potassium ions in that process and you have to replace those. So if you really, really are an athlete and you, let's say, run a marathon, for example, <clears throat> just simply drinking water is not enough. You need, you need things that have salt um, and that have sodium and potassium and other electrolytes in them to replenish the ones that you've lost through your sweat. And then there's two processes called endocytosis and exocytosis. So endo means into, Exo means to exit. So endocytosis is the process by which cells take in large particles, particles that are too large to simply pass through the cell membrane. Um, those large particles might be nutrition particles that need to get into the cell. Um, and so the cell has this really cool process. I actually have a little visual to show you here. So if this is outside of the cell, this is inside of the cell. So endocytosis is it, your, their cell membrane itself, this plasma membrane, plasma membrane and cell membrane are the same thing. So it kind of makes a little pocket here. And these, let's say they're nutrition particles, they could be other things too. 
um, go into this little pocket. It, it completely closes the door here, if you will, and then it takes this in as a vesicle inside the cell, and then the cell is going to kind of move it around to wherever it needs to go. Exocytosis is the opposite. Maybe there's some proteins that were made inside of the cell that need to get to the outside, outside of the cell. Um, so those proteins get made by ribosomes on the endoplasmic reticulum. They go through the Golgi apparatus that packages them up to vesicles. They move to the cell membrane. Once it fuses with the cell membrane, the cell membrane opens up, basically opens the door and kind of spews them out, if you will. So those are endo means into, exo means to exit. And, and those are kind of, I like this visual, some nice examples um, or nice visuals of kind of how that might be represented. Endocytosis can be further broken down into whether it's liquid or solid particles. We call it penocytosis if it's liquid, so cell drinking, if you will, and then phagocytosis if it's cell eating or solid particles. Um, and then we already said exocytosis is exiting the cell. And then this, all of this stuff is really, the cell membrane is so important in regulating homeostasis in the cells. So this homeostasis means the maintaining those constant internal conditions. So passive and active transport are really, really important in regulating how much, for example, sodium and potassium and nutrition and all of the other things that the cell needs to balance. Um, this is how it gets, and even oxygen and carbon dioxide. Um, the, the cell membrane integral in, in maintaining homeostasis for living things. We talk in terms a lot of homeostasis, those conditions being maintained in the body itself, like temperature and so on. All of that starts at the cellular level. Um, it's not like our lungs are maintaining homeostasis of oxygen. Nope, they're just the way that the oxygen gets into our bodies but it's really the cells that, that um, the me cell membrane that allows it into and out of the cells and maintains homeostasis at that cellular level. And that really concludes everything for this chapter. Um, everything for this chapter from, we started with cells and cell structure and cell organelles, um, and then um, went through the, all the processes that move things through the cell membrane and I think, so now we'll be, we have a lab that we're going to do when you're here this week. And then we will, um, we'll start reviewing for the test uh, for next week. Good luck.